Welcome to The Apprentice, your fire. It's hard to believe we are now three quarters of the way to Lord Sugar's gruelling search for his business partner. This week, we saw a glimpse of what it was like in the playground back in school for Adam, when he got to pick the best player for his football team. <laughs> Nick. Nick, you're very popular. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome back, mate. <laughs> As ever, we have a sparkling mix of panellists, marketing entrepreneur Lucy Jackson, comedian Andy Parsons, and from Radio 1, DJ Sarah Cox. Welcome to Your Fired. <laughs> Tonight's task of promoting English sparkling wine left one candidate feeling rather flat. Jenna, you take sole responsibility for the disastrous video that we have on this occasion here. It's not just the disastrous video that worries me. It is with regret that um, I'm going to have to say, despite all the hard work, Jenna, I'm sending you home. You're fine. Thank you, Sugar. Please welcome Jenna Whittingham. Jenna, it seems difficult to know which drink with which to commemorate uh, this particular moment. <laughs> have you tried champagne? Uh, it's quite <laughs> fantastic as a thing. Are you disappointed to have been turfed out like this? Yeah, I'm disappointed, really disappointed. I actually, because I had a couple of good weeks being project manager and then winning the task and then doing my Essex tan, you know, they all loved it in Essex. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I was on a good run. So ideally, I did think it was quite good. I actually was going with sort of the Brazilla, you know, she was disgusted at a wedding day, but obviously it didn't really go down very and well. did you not think uh, that an ad that basically said, English sparkling wine, because your wife's a bitch, <laughs> uh, <laughs> might be the wrong attitude to have? Well, I thought we'd go with a bit of humour, because obviously Phoenix is, well, as you saw, it was a bit of boring. So I, when we watched it in the boardroom, I was like, Oh, actually, I think you might like the humour one, but obviously you did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK, OK. Um, let's have a look at where it went wrong. You're going to be like, what is this? And then you're going to be like, Basel Forte, Forte Towers. No! You're going to be like, oh, no! And then you're like, no! The green chat's over, no! You're going to, like, go, no! As, like, a crazy bridezilla. Spielberg can rest easy, that's for sure. I just don't want it to be too cheesy. No, it won't be. Oh. Great. This this video is going to be either love it or hate it. That's horrible. It was a bit of a risky choice to go with it, yep. but we wanted something different. You didn't realise that this was a high quality product, and you should not have been making a humorous video in the beginning. Yes, yeah, I watched it and went, no! Uh, and <laughs> so in that regard, it was it was who's that? I, I wanted to like. You know, so he'd like, he'd come in panicking, you know, because he's always panicking, so he'd be like, oh no, the bride's not got what she wants, and he'd be panicking. There's a strap line as well that you basically went, what she needs is English <laughs> sparkling wine. You don't want any line in an ad that goes, what she needs <laughs> is a bloody good sparkling. That's how I she needs. Like, <laughs> sort of right. It, it's yeah. better as a strap line than the one, what was the one that you had? Was it? Uh, oozing, oozing, oozing luxury in every pore. Uh, yeah, it sounds compelling. Oozing luxury from every pore. That was pore. Stephen's little. He's quite good at the line, so Stephen. Do you know when you ooze from your pore? Yeah. <laughs> <you actually, laughs> comparing it to perspiration. <laughs> not only can you drink it, but you can sweat it as well. Yeah. I like the drink. Yeah. I like the saltiness of it. I, I like yeah. the thing. I think in any advert, oozing and pouring should be kept to like teenage face wash, and that's <laughs> it because that's the sort of thing. Pores just don't really work as a thing. Yeah. Really, as, as, I think as the problem. problem the problem with it was that your, your cheese radar is kaput. I'm a big fan of yours, but I think the whole thing about, no, it's not remotely cheesy, <laughs> and then it's an action, and Johnny Ball randomly seemed to be there going, less fizz, more sparkle, <laughs> and the hysterical bride, and I'm like, what's going on? Lucy, on, a, on a proper branding note, how, how, how much of a misstep was this? I think it's really hard to do humour for a premium brand, and I think that's what really got missed, is that English sparkling wine is, is rivaling champagne in terms of quality and price point. And I don't think you'd ever see a champagne house, a Dom Perignon, 
putting something together that was of that kind of quality with that humour. I just don't think it worked. Were there any other second takes that you wanted to, that you would have gone? Any other direction you should have gone? There? Well, I th well, they were going to go with like a Mr. Fizz and Mrs. Sparkle. That was going to be one. <laughs> 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 that was that was thrown on the like button. An advert for bathroom <laughs> cleaner or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> That wasn't my idea, but we were, you know, I was going with it, and it was we were going to go with Mr. Fizz and Mrs. Sparkle. Then I just thought I was trying to probably go with the approach of a disgusted bride. Really, you know, you want the best yeah. on your your wedding day. So she was disgusted because we English sparkling wines the best. But yeah, maybe I could have maybe maybe chose me ac actors a bit better. Well, let's not blame the actors. <laughs> <they're such laughs> <laughs> That's who should have got fired. Yeah. The actors. <laughs> we, can, we can bring them in, like to play playing the role of Jen as the actors from the bride scene. <laughs> uh, <hello. laughs> the, uh, but were you not given enough of a steer? I mean, did you not? Well, I think what had happened. Maybe Ricky should have gone on more of the video because obviously we went to the, the vineyards and I didn't really know much about how you know English sparkling wine was made. So it was really interesting. But I thought my point in the boardroom was that no one really stopped. We kept telling them all the time, you know, we're going to be doing this, it's going to have this comedy, we're going to have this disgusted brand, and no one sort of said, no, we're not having that, this is the way it's going to be. So I suppose I, I was getting a bit excited and thinking, oh, I'm a director, let's go with it. And then... Fair enough. Well, the key thing here, obviously, is we in this situation, because you were doing a bit of dust, but there was another who failed to sparkle. <laughs> Another word that springs to mind for me that represents quality, excellence, Britishness, grandeur. It's a French word. How about chink? If he's so clever, if he's sitting in watching Jenna make a terrible advert, what's to stop him stepping in? That's a very good point. Very good. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Happy that. Sparkling sun, down to a sparkling conversation. She obviously needs English sparkling wine. Didn't tell you to make a carry-on boozing movie. I mean, ooh, maitre d', you know. Where's my grandeur gone? Someone's nicked my grandeur. I like the sound of that. Stephen, you are this close to going outside that door. Do you think Stephen should have gone? Um, I do think Stephen should have gone in a sense that, yeah, he was with me, and like I say, no one stopped me. And I think out of the three of it is, I think I had a better um, sort of of the process, I had achieved more. I mm. sort of done better than him. I won as project manager. I was always like the top seller. I had a better report to give to the table. But I think when you're so far in the stage, you know, one little mistake, you know, you might not see. Well, she's tripped up a bit there. She should be on the ball. Okay, Lisa, what do you think? Stephen should have gone. Uh, I do think Stephen should have gone. I think he definitely should take some of the responsibility. I think Ricky should take some of the responsibility too. As, as Jenna was saying, you know, he, he kept spouting this quality message, which was so important, but then he should have vetoed the concept of humour in the first place on that basis, rather than just sort of, you know, saying, oh, as long as it's not cheesy. I don't think that was, you know, it enough, wasn't directing yeah. you enough and you interpreted yeah. that differently and then you produced a film that he wasn't happy with. But Stephen, I think, he, he doesn't listen. Like, he likes to kind of say Sorry, what he thinks. Specifics, please. <laughs> 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 it was quite a power move, that, wasn't it? Really? I know, so, you shot me for a moment. Sorry, excuse me, I meant from right. him rather than from me. <laughs> uh, so, but the, uh, yeah, but he, he did, like, in the yeah, boardroom. Yeah. Oh, in the boardroom, he does stuff like that. Like, yeah. The, uh, yeah, and he's got that classic sort of salesman thing going, which, which obviously works in his job, but I find quite irritating in certain situations where, you know, someone will say something to him, and he won't listen, and he'll say, oh, I, love, I love that point, good point. But he hasn't actually listened to what the point was at all, and then he moves on to something completely separately. So I think even though Ricky was saying the quality message and you were both hearing that, I think it's in Stephen's head it's gone straight out the window and he just do whatever he wants to. Uh, we Stephen in the boardroom, have you wriggled a bit? Well, um, I think he was definitely lucky to get away with it, to be the one that got away. Um, the thing that I love about Stephen is his various facial expressions. <laughs> when he gets blamed for something, <laughs> um, like when he gets brought back into the boardroom or when he gets blamed for something, he does a face of kind of like, hmm. Unusual decision. <laughs> Not one I would have gone with, blaming me. But if that's what it, you know, and I imagine him using that as a good defence mechanism, like you know, in, in court, you're guilty of murder. Hmm, unusual. But <laughs> that's what you're gonna go with. Or his wife, like I'm leaving you. Well, really? Not what I would have done. But if you want to do that, okay. <laughs> The thing is, it is to your credit that you can't do the full Stephen Beaker, as I call it, face. Which is yeah. mm. I'm <laughs> taking it on tour. I'm taking it on tour. Uh, Properly curves down on both sides. <laughs> 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 yeah, I can't.
Be sorry, Andy. You're gonna... Well, I was just to say, I think Jenna took too much risk on herself. She was going, I'm a risk taker. The risk was taking total responsibility for that task yeah. and I not know. deflecting enough of it on Stephen. You kept on going, I'm a risk taker. Okay, yeah. Yes, I booked the lion. Yes, <laughs> I've never worked with lions before, <laughs> but I'm a risk taker. I OK, think... the lion bit me, but how? Yeah, I think what I wanted to sort of show him, like, obviously, I was a girl, I've settled me on business, it's all very new, you know, a very small shop, not like, you know, you, you're up against some really big high flyers in there, you know, I've got good businesses, you've got really good high jobs. So I wanted to show him, like, whatever he sort of threw, threw me into, I could do it. So, whereas, like, Stephen probably be like, yeah, that's a very good question. I've got a very good answer for you, sort of thing. Whereas I'd be like, well, no, we'll do this. We'll go with it. So I think I wanted to show him I had the confidence to sort of drive the decision, really. I well, think as well, Jenna, that it's very honourable to admit when you've made a mistake, but you want to kind of be known for making less thing, mistakes yeah. rather than messing up and then admitting it, even though it's very nice that you admit it, it wouldn't work in all jobs. Like, if you're a surgeon, you can't just be like, <laughs> I removed the wrong lung, OK, yeah. hands up, sorry, and I've I learned from it. I took a risk, I took a risk. The two of them, 50-50, I went one way or the other, what are you going to do? How did I know it was his left, not my left? Uh, no, who wants? Like, easy mistake to make. We're always on the lookout, by the way, for relationships between candidates, uh, and we found one which involves you and your new BFF. My best friend of all time is uh, Jenna, the lovely Jenna. Gabrielle is just so funny. She has this quirky art style. She's always laughing. She'll laugh at nothing. All you need to say to her is, like, I'm getting a broom and she'll start laughing. She is a bit nutty. Just the way she does it, the way she says it, it's hilarious. Gabrielle! <laughs> we do have a good giggle together. She's quite on my wavelength, is Gabrielle. If Jenna left, I would be devastated. I think she's my Siamese twin. I love Jenna to bits. She's never whingy. She's always laughing. <laughs> she's my old time. My favourite girl. A little Bessie there. That's very, very sweet. Yeah, yeah. she's lovely, Gabrielle. Really, she will, out throughout any task, she'll always motivate you. She'll always like, you know, come on, you know, she really motivates the team. She hasn't really got a nasty bone in her body. She won't like get in the boardroom or call, you know, she'll say the way it is. And you no, know, she's really, really lovely. My little pal now. Oh, it's very sweet. It's very, very Me nice. little southerner. So yeah, gonna... oh, across the Great Divide. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. <laughs> I say we spread the word, though, isn't it? And eventually we'll gain control. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gabrielle's got this slightly weird thing, though, hasn't she? When she doesn't, she, when she's not in the last three, when she goes out, she actually taps the other people on the shoulder. <laughs> she, yes. It's like, and sometimes you think, is, is it? You know, presumably she's being nice, but you think she may be trying to give a, a little signal to Lord Sugar, yeah. mafia style. <laughs> this is the one to go. This one. <laughs> Or maybe she's hypnotised them all, and that's the thing when you feel the tap on your shoulder and you're out. <laughs> Where is she? I mean, fantastic. She walks out and goes. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing. Yeah. What did you think of Gabrielle? I really like Gabrielle, actually. I think she's a real contender. She's a really nice girl. She's a good all-rounder. Um, she's a team player. And uh, I think that counts for a lot, being a nice person. She's a really nice yeah. person. And if, if Lord Sugar's got to think about who can he work with on a day-to-day -day basis, actually, you're getting so near the end of the series now that he's got to start and be considering you know, that in, in more of a sense than I'm not going to give her loads of time and loads more episodes to see how she does. I actually need to start deciding now, is there someone I could work with on a day-to-day -day basis? And I think, she's, I think you could. And she's the one thing of the whole process, that actually nailed it was that wine glass in the shape of a rose. Yeah, yeah. that was really good, that. Yeah. I thought it was really clever, that. And that showed her creativity, you know, that showed that, you know, she can come up with some great ideas, which she has throughout the process, I think, as well. So I think she's one to be, one to watch, yeah. really. She wasn't sure if it was going to go down well, though. There was a I know, she was a bit like... Yeah, she'd be like, yes, I did that. Yeah. Oh, no, I did, yes, <laughs> I did that, I did that, yes. <laughs> yes. That was mine, yes, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we might as well have a look at what we're discussing this, back at your apprentice career, uh, as it were, uh, and you're trying, in particular, in week six in the street food task. Jenna, you'll be the team leader of Sterling. Thank you, Archie. I can't cook, but I've worked in the restaurant for eight. There's a bit of pressure on it, but I can handle it. You took the quality and gourmet thing seriously, didn't you? And it had to be gourmet and best quality ingredients. Sterling spent an awful lot more, £268. Risky. I think meatier the better. Why don't you come and have a smell? That will warm you up. That is nice. I'm pleased to say that Sterling generated a profit of three hundred and nineteen pounds and seventy-eight pence. Well done.
credit's worth due. They set you a gourmet task, you went for gourmet food. It would have been phenomenally irritating, I presume, if you'd been beaten by Adam's <laughs> cheap, rancid <laughs> pasta <laughs> that he'd banged out for nothing. It was like the Battle of the Northerners, weren't it, on that task? Me and Adam, biting yes. it out. Yeah, it was, so, yeah. yeah. Battle of Northerners who'd never gone any further north than where you're from, North, <laughs> uh, obviously. <laughs> you know, I might get back to that. The, uh, the, were you impressed with Jen on that task? Definitely. I think you understood the brief really well. You created something really gourmet. I thought the name was brilliant. And you were really enthusiastic and nice to be around. And I think you, you know, did a great job on that Thanks. task, definitely. Yeah, I think definitely you were a people person and I think your warmth really came across. People were just drawn to you and to your enthusiasm. So, yeah, you did brilliantly. Thank and you. That fake tan selling, I mean, that was incredible, wasn't it? 